So you need to make dowels, but you don't have a lathe. Well in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make dowels using simple hand tools. Sometimes you don't have the right tool for the job. You have to make do with what you've got. This was my position when I needed precise dowels for my dining table. A good reason to do this by hand is to use stock that you can't normally buy, such as exotics. But for this video, I'm going to be using white oak. Let's go over the hand tools that I use to actually do this. So the most important tool, 100%, you will see why um, later on, is the Mentorikana. And this uh, is a chamfer plane and it allows us to get really, really accurate results. So we'll go over why that's so important later. We got digital calipers, again, really, really important for accuracy here. You've got to have these. And this is for anything you do in the shop. I think the digital calipers are one of the most important tools. Um, for the final shaping, we're going to be using Mykana. And for the super final shaping, we're going to use 80 grit sandpaper. Then we're going to go to 120. Then we are going to go to 320. So that's the process here. You need to find out how big the hole is so you can make the dowel the same size. In my case, it's around 16.4 millimeters. I would be lying if I said this was all by hand. Um, we're going to be doing the actual shaping of the dowel by hand, but we are going to be doing the main dimensioning with power tools. But you can also do this with hand tools. Just for the sake of this video, this is way faster, and most of you will probably have some sort of dimensioning tools in your shop. I start off by going to the joiner to flatten a face, and then square and flatten an edge. You also need to make sure that you put a face mark on the face and an edge mark on the edge. These two surfaces need to go face down on the thickness planer. You can see me checking the thickness of the piece as I go. This is very important. You do not want to go past that 16.4 millimeters. I guess now is a good time to show you guys the jig that makes it so much easier. It holds the dowel in place on the top here. And I've got a 45 degree miter on both of these and I face the boards towards each other so that way the dowels can actually fit right in here and I put a screw here in the end so that way the dowels have something to butt up against whenever you're planing. It's a very simple jig. You can throw it together on the table saw and uh, I didn't think it was important enough for me to actually make it on this video. Just to show you guys, it's super simple. I just screwed them together. Now it's time to plot the Mentorikana and start chamfering the edges. My main goal here is to chamfer two opposite corners down to 16.4 millimeters. I will take small amounts off till I get down to that dimension. I use the calipers to check it. Once I get the two corners down to 16.4 mil, I now have the Kana perfectly set for the other two corners. 
Now I just have to do the same for them. Once you have that done, it really starts to take shape. For the next step, you can use a few things. You can use your Mentori Kana as a block plane, you can use a Kana, or you can even use a western plane. All we're going to do is rotate the dowel in the jig and take off all of the sharp corners. This will leave you with a more round shape. For demonstration purposes, I decided to use all three. Now it's time to start making it look like an actual dowel. We're going to start with 80 grit sandpaper and just wrap it around the top of the dowel. This will round over the little facets made by the planes. So with all that being done, I can sight down this and it is super, super shiny. And I can still see the facets on here, but that is okay for me. I want you to actually be able to fill the facets whenever it's finished because that means you can tell that it's handmade. And for me, that is really important. Um, you can go as far as you want to with this. You can make it as round as you really want. But now the test is to see if it will fit in that hole. The whole point in this was to make these really accurate to fit to a hole. So let's try it out. Okay, so let's test it out here. I haven't done any shaping off camera. It's all been on camera. So this is just straight from that. We're gonna see if this fits in the hole. So here we go. I can already tell it's gonna fit perfect. Ooh, look at that. I'm super, super happy with that. Ooh, it even makes a cool noise. Let's see if you guys can hear this. Makes a little popping noise that comes out. I'm really pleased with that. So that's pretty much it. You guys can do this with simple tools. It doesn't take much and you can get some really, really good results. The reason why I needed to make dowels like this is because of this dining room table right here. You might be in a similar situation where you need joinery with dowels and uh, this is a perfect way to do it if you're wanting a very, very specific size dowel that you just can't buy. In my case, I needed 16 millimeter dowels. I probably could have bought them, but I just wanted to add that extra level to my dining room table. I wanted to hand make them and uh, this is kind of what I came up with. Um, and I really hope you guys learned something. The whole reason for the dowels here on the top rail and the feet is to A, add strength. And up here, there's two reasons. One is to add strength and two is to attach the tabletop to the legs. So whenever it comes time to moving this inside the house, this will not fit in the house as is. I have to take these pegs out, take this top rail off of the leg with the dining room tabletop 
and uh, that way I can get the legs inside the house and then we can assemble it in place. So whenever I eventually sell this table, that's the way it will be assembled in place as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. The next one should be this dining room table build. Don't miss it. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you later.